Good afternoon, folks, and welcome to a very special episode here on The Angry Astronaut. We have a very special guest with us from the FAA. Uh, would you be so kind as to introduce yourself to the viewers? Absolutely, Jordan. Uh, my name is Kelvin Coleman. I have the privilege of serving as the Associate Administrator for the Office of Commercial Space Transportation uh, at the FAA. I've been with the FAA now for more than 25 years, most of which uh, has been with the Office of Commercial Space Transportation, and for the last uh, two years I've served in this capacity as Associate Administrator for Commercial Space. Once again, really appreciate the time you're giving us today. So let's go ahead and, and just kick it off straight into the public safety issue, because that is, as you mentioned yesterday, the main focus really of what the FAA is the most concerned about. It's easier for the public, I think, to, to digest and quantify all of this if they know what specific issues the FAA may be concerned with. So I was thinking two specific examples. Let's say we have a very large rocket taking off fairly close to a heavily populated area. What sort of dangers does the FAA see there and, and what do you do to try to to mitigate those dangers. And then in the case of, say, an, an inland spaceport with a vehicle similar to the Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 that ventures just outside of a flight corridor or something like that, and what sort of dangers do those sorts of scenarios represent? And any other examples you might be able to bring up and what the FAA does to protect the public? Sure, absolutely. So there's a couple of hazards that we're mostly concerned with uh, for when it comes to commercial launch activities. One is obviously uh, debris uh, that can result from the activity. Uh, we're concerned about toxics uh, that could result from the activity as well as something we call distance focusing overpressure, which is energy in the atmosphere that causes window breakage and those types of things. Um, we certainly want to protect individuals as well as large populations and so we establish risk criteria, uh, we call it individual risk criteria as well as collective risk criteria. Uh, we require companies to go through uh, things like we, that we call hazard analyses to take a look at all the various hazards, how those hazards affect uh, the levels of risk that are acceptable to the public and we set those, we set those parameters. Uh, we require companies to come up with mitigations uh, to address uh, the potential hazards. Uh, we check out how those mitigations work, so we want no, not only want to identify those mitigations, but also we want to understand uh, how the companies have verified that those mitigations will in fact work. You know, so we check those things out as well. Uh, once we kind of go through those types of analyses, we typically set up what we call hazard areas around the launch activity to ensure that uh, the activity is contained if there were to be a mishap or an off nominal event. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, work that we do with the companies to, to establish those types of protocols. So in terms of, uh, you know, let's contrast this with the uh, safety with commercial aviation. You sure. know, how does, how is space flight different from commercial aviation in terms of the safety challenges that the FAA has seen thus far? Well, with, with commercial aviation, uh, it's a fundamental difference in that we really are looking to uh, ensure mission success with uh, commercial aviation. We want one takeoff and one landing for each flight. Uh, with commercial launch activity, our focus is not on mission success. It's very clearly on public safety. Uh, we have mishaps, what we call mishaps, some might call them accidents, uh, where the vehicle doesn't work. Um, whereas with commercial aviation, we need that aircraft to work every time because we have people aboard. Uh, on the commercial uh, space flight side, we have something very different when it comes to people who are flying aboard these, uh, these spacecraft. We have informed consent, whereby uh, a person flying, uh, sort, of, sort of someone going to a doctor's office, would uh, be informed of the associated risk with flying on the spacecraft. Uh, and if they accept those risks, they basically sign a form and say, hey, I've been informed, and they fly uh, with a, a large amount of, a, of accepted risk, if you will, very different than what we see on the commercial aviation side. Do you foresee in the future, as more people are flying in commercial space flight, that the focus of the FAA may change a bit and become more similar to uh, commercial aviation? Well, I think that depends on how commerce, uh, I'm sorry, Congress wants to to play that. Of course, right now we are under what we call a moratorium 
uh, for commercial human spaceflight. Now, we've had commercial spaceflight authority since 2004. Uh, and since that time, we, we have regulations on the books right now, but those regulations only address uh, the informed consent piece. Um, we'll have to see how it, how it plays. Right now, uh, commercial uh, human spaceflight activities are in the, the tens of hundreds of activities a year. Um, soon it'll be into the thousands, hopefully, and uh, maybe attitudes will change. Um, but right now, it's, it is where it is, and who knows uh, what, what's, what's to come next. So would you say then, based on this emphasis that you're talking about, when we're talking about um, increasing launch cadence, as most launch providers want these days, sure. and, and your side, ensuring public safety, how do we strike that happy medium between the two? Well, that's a great question. So I, I will say uh, since the first launch that we licensed back in 1989, we've had 700 uh, launches, or more than 700 launches, without anyone in the public being uh, hurt or injured or having any significant property damage. That's an outstanding safety record. Just last year, we had more than 120, we had 124 operations last year, uh, well, again, with no one being hurt or injured. Um, you know, we have regulations in place. We have a new Part 450 um, that uh, is uh, uh, scoped to address launch and reentry activities of all types. Uh, we think that's working well. Um, our regulatory framework has really been outstanding, and so I, I think it's really well equipped to to address the increasing cadence that we're seeing. Um, obviously, there are challenges in the airspace as you see more. Uh, as we see more operations take place, and we're working very closely with our air traffic organization to make sure that uh, commercial launch operations are somewhat segregated uh, from uh, the rest of the activities that are taking place in the NASA. We've done a good job of that. The degree of that separation uh, becomes an issue from time to time. You know, how much aerospace do you need to allocate in and around an operation? And we're working very closely with our air traffic organization to minimize uh, that amount of aerospace that's needed so the, the impacts on the other NASA users can be minimal. Last question. Um does anything keep you up at night? Do you ever, I mean, you have, you said over 700 launches without an incident, without significant property damage, without so much as a, you know, an injury. Um, that is an incredible launch record um, and safety record rather. However, that could change. I mean, there's always a first time. Do sure. those sorts of things concern you? They keep you oh, up yeah. at night? Or, sure, yeah. sure, absolutely. Yeah, you, 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 we always worry about, uh, you know, a possible bad day. Uh, what that might look like, um, how we will react to that, uh, how we will engage with our partners, uh, how we will engage with our stakeholders on the Hill and other places in the public. Uh, those types of things we think about all the time. Um, and so we, we try to remain vigilant about safety. Uh, we don't want to cut corners because we want to avoid a bad day uh, if at, at all costs. And so those are the type of things we think about all the time. And also we think about the future a lot. You know, how do we uh, grow, help grow this industry in a safe fashion. Uh, we talk about our mission being uh, that to enable, uh, to enable safe space transportation, so we think about that a lot as well. How do we do that? Well, I really appreciate the time you gave us today, Administrator Coleman. Thank you hey, so much. Thank you so much as well. And until next time, guys, stay angry about space.